Welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, we find facts and fine tune figures. Let's get started on our empty workspace. So, within our workspace, the first activity we are going to be doing is to be creating a lake house. A lake house. So, you switch your data engineering experience. Once you switch your data engineering experience, you click on lake house. Lake house is for storing big data. And so, I'll click on lake house. Once I click on lake house, I'll just call it first, um, first lake house. I'll call it first lake house and I'll click on create. So, once it's created, I'll have access to the interface of a lake house. Like I said earlier, one lake is the central storage, but within one lake, there is also lake house. And data is stored in a lake house in data lake format, which is optimized for tabular model. Within your lake house, you have various means that you can ingest data. Either you are using your new data flow gen 2 that is powered by Azure Data Flow Gen 2 or your new data pipeline that give you access to your data factory experience or a notebook that you can use to ingest data or even a shortcut. Then within Legos also, you can also upload your file into these folders where you have files and then you have this little icon where you can do upload. Why this Legos was created, there is also an SQL endpoint that was created on the background for us that we can use to query the data in our Legos. Data in our lake house can actually be structured and unstructured. So data can be ingested in the lake house using any of these ingestion methods. So let's show a new shortcut for example. A new shortcut is going to give us this shortcut wizard where you can actually connect to another one lake tenant or you can even connect to an external source like AWS S3 bucket or you can actually connect to even ADLS Gen2 or any of the uh, class services that may come up in the future. So instead of moving data from your existing storages into your own lake environment, there is a shortcut that you can actually use to actually make this data available within fabric environment. Now, our first data ingestion is going to be using a data pipeline. So I'll create a new pipeline and I will give my pipeline to a suitable name. So I will call it uh, ingest in ingest ingest um ingest data from ingest data from blob then i will click on create so i will click on create so once i click on create it will open up the data factory experience for me that i can now use to ingest data into this lake house so once that is created i will just walk us through the interface of a data pipeline by default you will always have this copy assistant on your screen that you can use to ingest data into your lake house or any destination that you want so you can either use this sample data if that is what you want to do or you can scroll down and look at the number of sources that are available within your data factory pipeline either from the workspace sources or from azure sources or databases that you can use all from file or generic protocol and even no sql2 is available then the services and app also is also available so these are all the data sources that you can connect to using your data factory assuming we are picking on one of these sample data sets now assuming we are picking on this diabetes data set then you can use this um, wizard and click on next so that will take us to the uh, uh, connect connect us to the data source and then we can have a preview of the data that we are ingesting and then we can choose the destination connect to data destination then review and save and of course we can now run the pipeline however that is not what we want to we want to ingest the data from a blob so so i'll click on cancel so i will click on yes then we have a brand new canva where we can actually build our own pipeline from scratch as a way of making life easy, you can actually choose to start from a task. Choosing to start from a task means that you can get templates that you can start with as against building from scratch. So if any of these templates that is available fit into the workload that we want to use, then you can pick on any of them and use it for your data ingestion. Say for example, you want to copy from file to database, or you want to even copy from sample data to a warehouse, or you want to even copy 
uh, data from databases or copy from multiple containers. So all these templates are available for you that you can pick any of them for your pipeline development. However, we are going to be building our own pipeline from scratch. But before we continue, let me just focus through the interface of a pipeline. So we have four tabs. You have your own tab. You have your activity tab. You have your run tab. You have your build tab. So on the view tab, uh, you can actually view the JSON code that has been generated on the background as you are building your pipeline. Or after you've populated your uh, your Canva, you can also align things that you have on this Canva. You can zoom to it, zoom in and zoom out also. And then you have your run tab. This is where you validate the pipeline that you have built. And then you can click on run here to just run the pipeline. And of course, you can also schedule your pipeline Maybe you want to schedule it at the regular interval, maybe uh, on daily basis or weekly basis, or however you want your scheduling to be. And you have your activity tab. This is where it gets interesting. Remember, I mentioned earlier that uh, pipeline is a logical arrangement of activity to ensure that data is moved from one place to another. So you have your copy activity, you have your data flow activity, notebook activity, all of this activity. And even the new artwork and team activity can be utilized to make sure that data is moved from one destination to another. And of course, there are other activities that you can see listed here. So the first activity we are going to be making use of is the copy activity. Remember that we had a default uh, interface when we open our pipeline. You can get that back using your copy assistant. So that will bring back this interface that can guide you on how to ingest data using any of the sources that you want so but then we are going to be creating a copy activity not a copy assistant so i will add that to canva so once i add this to canva you can see a, a copy activity the same thing goes for any of these other activity maybe i want to use a notebook activity i can click on a notebook activity so i can click on a notebook activity that i want to use so the logical arrangement of all this activity is what we call a pipeline and then the ensure data is moved from one data source to a data destination so so within our pipeline we are going to be ingesting data using a copy activity so you can come back to activity tab right here and then once you are on activity tab you click on copy so let's use a copy assistant mean our first time and then we can navigate down and pick on azure data source so once you're on azure data source we are coupling from a blob storage so i'm going to be providing us uh, the link on my github repository here for the course so this is the this is the link which is a public blog story that you can actually ingest from so you copy this uh, url then once you have it copied then you come back to your uh, pipeline environment and then you click on next so once you click on next you create a new connection so you select new connection and then you paste the url that you copied right here once you have that pasted, then you also click on next. So once you click on next, it's going to show you uh, the data that you are ingesting from that public from that public blog. In that public blog. So it is loading right now. So once it's loaded, you can now preview the data that we have. So now it is asking for the path. So but you will notice from the from the URL that we provided, you see that this sample is the part where the data is actually stored within this public blog. So just come back to your pipeline and type the, 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 the parts manually yourself in case you get the same error. So just click on sample and click on retry. So once you do that, you should be able to navigate through the public blog and get access to your blog story. So this is the data that I want to ingest inside sample folder within our public blog story. So I'll pick on this packet file now and then it will be loaded and then we can now have a review of the data that we are trying to ingest from the blog storage. So once the data is done loading, then we can now navigate and configure it to the data destination. So our data is loaded now, then we can click on next so you can scroll across before you click on next to see the kind of data that you have on your packet file so i will click on next so once i click on next then i have to configure the data destination in our case now we are ingesting from a blob data source in lake house so we can then pick on the lake house that we want 
to be our destination. Either you are creating a new lakehouse, even right from your data pipeline, or you can use the lakehouse that you have created before. So we are choosing our destination now. So in this case, Isida is going to pick it automatically for you, or you can navigate yourself to the destination that you want. So you can ingest this data to any of these sources. But in our case now, we want to move that data into a lake house within our own workspace. So I'll pick on workspace, then I'll pick on lake house. So once I pick on lake house, then I can click on next. So right here, then I can use an existing lake house or I can create a new lake house right from here. But because we have a lake house already, I will keep it on existing lake house. Then I will do a drop down here and then you can see the lake house that we created earlier. So I pick on this lake house now and I click on next again. Then I can see that, okay, I'm ingesting this data into a table form or into a file form. So I can name the table here. I can just call it New York Taxing Green Data. So the default name is fine. And then you can see the schema that has been defined. At this point, you can either change the name of your destination. You can type and put in the name, or you can even change the data type even right from this point. So these are all the columns of the data that is available in that blob storage. So I will click on Next. So once I click on Next, then you have a, a quick summary that you are copying data from your blob storage into your lake house, and then this is the name of the table. And then of course, if you want to start to copy your data immediately, or you can just uncheck, depending on your use case, then i don't want to do that immediately so i will uncheck this and i will click on ok so for me this copied activity has been configured properly it has been configured properly so i can just give it a name and call it um copy data from from blob so that's the name of this activity this is the name of this activity so i can then come to my run tab where I will then validate what I have done if it's done appropriately. So I will click on validate and then my validate uh, interface will come up and it's telling me that my the data activity has been validated and no error is found. So I can then click on run. So once I click on run, I'll be prompted to save and run and then this pipeline will run. And once it's done running, then I can see that the pipeline has either run successfully or the pipeline is going to fail. So if you don't successful, you get the notification telling you about the uh, status of your pipeline. So let's close this uh, validation interface and then you can see that the pipeline status is in progress. Once it's done, we can then go back into our lake house and then see if the data is actually ingested truly. So it's taking about 30 minutes now. So now our pipeline has run successfully and then you can come here and see the output of our pipeline. You can see that okay, this data has been written It's about 1.5 billion of data. And of course, you can just close this interface and then you come back to your uh, lake house. So click on our lake house and then boom, we are expecting to see our data in this lake house. So you can just come here and then click on refresh so once you click on refresh it automatically populates the data so you can click on the data and actually preview it and see what has been done so this is the data that has been ingested from a blob storage and then you can see this little icon telling us that it's actually a package data format then from this uh, from this uh, lake house now you can then uh, assess your data using your SQL endpoint, or you can proceed further by opening a notebook. So I'm going to show us the SQL endpoint now, where we can use SQL to actually interact with our data. So to open up our SQL endpoint, just come to this lake house right here, and then you switch to SQL analytics endpoint. So that will give you your query interface where you can then query your data using SQL. So we have this interface now where you can use your SQL query to actually uh, query your data. So I'll come to new SQL query. So once I click this, and then I can type my SQL query here. So just like you have your typical databases, you have your DBO, you have your view, you have your you have your tables, view, function, and stop procedure. So I'll just come to this table 
click on more option then i'll select top 100 rules so i can then click on run so you see we have the top 100 rules and then you can explore and interact with the data sets using these um sql endpoints or you can even use your new visual query so we are still going to come to this new visual query in the course of our, our course <laughs>